Hello, this is Hannibal Kang, president of IJDO. I am reviewing the data modeling stations that we're setting up our employees with at home. Uh, we have a few people in a few satellite offices as well. Uh, these offices have been uh, equipped with things to re uh, reduce the chance of contracting COVID. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, 16 filters all over the place. Uh, we got uh, UV light air purifiers air scrubbers, formaldehyde, air purifiers, you name it. Let me start with the uh, low sustenance sources that these monitors are using. Although we have this running just from a laptop, although it's a uh, robust workstation laptop, 64 gigs of RAM, Xeon processors, etc. Um, we're not really using a lot of system resources. This may spike between 3 and 8% worst case scenario. Um, on the other side, we have the ER Studio software, which is using approximately 1.8 gigs of RAM uh, to load the ERP data model, what, which is what you're seeing on the screen now. I have it zoomed out so you can't see the details of it, uh, just in case someone tries to steal it off of the internet. Uh, but you can see the overview on that side as well. Let me give you another quick view of the other data model. Okay. And what this is, this is the pandemic contact tracing model. Um, some people have worked on this uh, after the fact to split it into the 57 or so versions requested by the other corporations, state governments or whatever they are. Uh, but as you can see, this model fits on three screens and the objective of, of getting these screens was to get to the point where we could do uh, two rows or four stars across all three monitors, give you full zoom or at least uh, full visibility of uh, a minimum of 24 stars. You know, I'm talking in multi-dimensional terms for people who are not data modelers. But this model has 509 entities, 11,447 attributes, and 562 relationships. And it fits very nicely on the screen. Demo the, the sizing and a little closer zoom. What I'm showing here is that you can indeed fit uh, four stars across on each monitor. You can get two rows down there as well. Uh, even if I stand about eight feet away, I can still read the text on the individual table. Uh, also, these monitors are equipped with polarizers. Uh, when you get these, don't try to peel this thing off. But I don't know if you can see this very well, but here, at the edge, you'll see like there's a type of film over top of this. It is a polarizing film. It does not come off. Not supposed to come off. So don't try to peel that off. It's actually stopping a lot of the reflection from the windows. So worst case scenario, we have a whole wall of windows here. A whole wall of windows over there, and this is what you can see on the screen. You can see a little bit in the lower left hand corner, uh, middle monitor. You can't see any reflection. The side monitor on the left side you can't see any reflection so it, work, it works quite well as far as the accessories we have waterproof keyboard we don't have waterproof mice uh, yet we're still trying to source those but we couldn't find any other waterproof that would also work with this equipment seamlessly uh, that are also wireless standard office chair all the desks are height adjustable So if you're six foot two, uh, you know, I'm six foot two and I can, you know, when I reach straight out, my arms are at a 90 degree angle. So these are ergonomically sound for anybody up to six foot two. I don't know if we have anybody taller than that, but if we do, we will accommodate it. On the other hand, we also have the standard sit-stand desks. I've been using them for, for years. And these are electronically adjustable uh, to several different heights. What you see over here, this is an old uh, data modeling station from 2016. 
it's just a standard HP cheap laptop that you can get for like $200 somewhere. Maybe $100 now. Uh, but you go to Best Buy somewhere you can get a $200 or $300 laptop. And even an old laptop can do this 4K uh, uh, monitor. And this is a Vizio 55-inch uh, uh, 4K. Uh, so worst case scenario, I don't know if anybody has any of these left, but worst case scenario, you'll have like a 4K 55-inch. As far as I know, everybody now has access to these uh, a minimum 75-inch 4K. If you have a laptop, if you have a desktop with the new NVIDIA RTX 30 series cards, you're going to get an 85-inch 8K setup. Uh, this office, the ceiling is not high enough to accommodate an 85-inch. Uh, hopefully, we won't get anybody with a ceiling that's so low that they can't accommodate an 85-inch at home. Uh, but as far as I know, if you have 10-foot 10 10 ceilings or higher, uh, you should be able to accommodate an 85 inch. Uh, what we have back here, um, basically uh, the installers have been instructed to put in uh, some extender cables uh, so you can actually use uh, these ports that are back here. You can see that HDMI cable going in there. But there are also, let me get in there, uh, USB and other HDMI ports in there, there's a network port, hardwired network port. These televisions, they connect to things wirelessly, like you can get a Bluetooth mouse, Bluetooth headphones, uh, those types of things connected to it. So you may not need those ports, um, but in case you do, there are some extender cables in the package. Let's take a look at how we have this connected. Uh, basically, we're coming out of the mini um, display port using a adapter cable going back to the back of the television with the HDMI side of that adapter cable. On the other television we were coming from a firewire adapter cable that transforms into an HDMI on the other end. And the problem is, we, 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 we originally had designed this to use both of these firewire ports, but what we found is that when we connect both of the firewire ports to two monitors, one of the monitors, uh, it seems like it just doesn't have enough power, and it starts to flicker, uh, and the image becomes unstable. So to fix that, we just went to a standard HDMI cable uh, that has no adapter. So it goes HDMI to HDMI, and that resolved that issue. So you're going to get three cables, the mini display port, uh, Thunderbolt, the HDMI, and the standard HDMI. If you have the laptop set up. And this is pretty much the same on this one. Uh, so all three monitors have pretty much the same setup. Alright, let's see if we can get... Now you may see some strange things in here. Because we cut off the centralized HVAC to make sure that the HVAC system doesn't circulate COVID-19 should it get in here. But essentially we rigged this office with a separate air conditioner for every single office. So <laughs> just to make sure. Uh, let me see if I can demo this real quick. Uh, these televisions also have internal PCs. We have a guy working on uh, the IT side to try to get some of this stuff to work right. It's not, it doesn't work quite right yet. Uh, but it does have the capability, it appears, uh, to connect to a remote Windows PC or a remote Mac uh, using like an Amazon Web Servers VDI uh, or other cloud service. Also, this uh, it can connect to Microsoft 365. Uh, to do that, you have to have a Samsung account to log into it, and you have to have the uh, company Microsoft account to log into that. The other thing um, that these monitors can do is that they can connect to Bluetooth devices. So you can have a Bluetooth wireless keyboard or a Bluetooth mouse or Bluetooth headphones and all of them will connect wirelessly uh, to a television. 
if we don't break them first. So. <laughs> Good guy. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> 